to Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Barbie. I would like to encourage everyone on my Facebook friends list and everyone in my social groups and all of my listeners worldwide. Please do me a favor and hit that like button and share this video podcast with your friends, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube page. It's free. Help this video podcast go viral by posting this link to your Facebook page, your Instagram page, and if you're on Twitter, now it's called X or even TikTok. This video podcast is available in three forms, audio, video, and as a written text in order for us to reach our audience. We have upgraded our platform by moving from an audio podcast to a video podcast using StreamYard technology. We want to interact with our audience in real time through the chat rooms, through our live streaming. I want to know if there is anyone on my friends list or anyone in my social groups that lives in America that knows how to do a professional fundraising. If so, please get in contact with me through my Facebook inbox. Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos podcast is our interactive black grassroots media component. We discuss controversial topics that you won't hear about from the mainstream media. We're committed to reporting truthful and accurate news. We believe that now is the time for a comprehensive new strategy and a new movement for black people and African people. I use this platform to interact with everyone on my Facebook friends list and everyone in my social groups by giving black business owners free airtime to promote their products and services and give people in the faith community an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I give black authors and ordinary Rabbi and citizens an opportunity to share their special talents to my listeners from the global community. After the show, I offer my guest speakers an, an incentive by teaching them how to create their own podcasts and YouTube channel to help them earn extra revenue. I also assist people on my friends list with creating basic websites, finding college scholarships, grants, housing, and legal services all for free. We're working on setting up our PayPal giving fund and our GoFundMe page as an indicator of our progress towards getting this film project fully funded and made. Our PayPal give, giving fund will only allow us to raise $10,000. Our goal is to raise $500,000 so that the black world would take us serious. I have invested 32 years of my life trying to connect with other like-minded black people and African people. I refuse to be ignored. My film project is my last attempt to try to do something positive for my racial group before I cut and run to Africa. My assignment is to generate enough capital from my revised book, my virtual store, and to raise donation through this video podcast so that we can get our story on the big screen. We offer something that no black politicians in America has, and that is a solution which will solve all of our social problems here in America, but we have to build it first. I am talking about Gracchio Chicago. We will offer a 21st century solution within the United States of America before we expand to Africa. Since I have little to no support for my cause, all I can do at this time is news and social commentary. Without financial support from the black grassroots and the global African family, then I am unable to do my job. This is why I'm reaching out to African immigrants within the United States of America from the following African nations, South Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Uganda, Angolia, Liberia, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and Nigeria. Work with me. 
The sooner we're able to get this film project fully funded and made, the sooner we can build Archive Chicago and expand to the African continent. Once the proceeds from the docudrama starts pouring in, then I will be in a better position financially to purchase property in Chicago, buy office equipment, and hire qualified black middle-class professionals and African immigrants within the United States. The Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago mission is to help eradicate urban violence in Chicago through art, culture, commerce, spiritual development, and hosting African tours in 10 African nations that I already mentioned earlier. We're going to meet people from my African group, Grakai of Africa. We will bring the best of the diaspora to each African nation so that we can set up local chapters and do international trade among our people. We will reconnect black entrepreneurs with African entrepreneurs, black artists with African artists. In this Christian business, our objective is to heal from enslavement and colonization. The title of this presentation, quote, Shooting in Edgewater Community, Supreme Court sides with Biden's open border policy, and NYPD officers attacked by migrants. Our first topic, shooting in Edgewater community. Edgewater is close to where I live. There was a shooting that killed one black teenager and wounded two others. To learn more about this, please go to my Medium page and look for the exact title of this presentation, then click on it and scroll down to show and prove. The video clip is entitled, quote, Officials, Parents Speak Out After Shooting Near Sin High School Leaves Teen Dead, Two Others Wounded, unquote. There was also another shooting last Friday in the downtown area of Chicago. Two black teenagers were gunned down in broad daylight. To learn more about this, please go to my Medium page and look for the exact title of this presentation. Then click on it and scroll down to show and prove. The video clip is entitled, quote, Mayor Release Statements After Shooting in Loop in Downtown Chicago, unquote. This is Chicago alone. Across the United States of America, our youth are being targeted by urban terrorists, and it seems like no one cares. Our heart and minds goes out to the parents and their loved ones. Over here, we don't use tunnel vision. We talk about what's happening to black youth and how we can help improve the African-American community. These stories alone is one of the reasons why African immigrants don't want to be around black Americans because many of them have left violence in their homeland. I did not ask for this assignment. The Lord pl has placed this on my heart ever since I was a teenager. I long to be on the African continent with my Christian business welcomed by Africans that want more out of life. The reason why I call this podcast Help Stop the Genocide in American Ghettos is because you can't sugarcoat genocide. Ain't nothing funny about a child's head being blown off by gunfire. Truth be told, I don't want my members living in an urban war zone. That's why I have been trying to connect with other like-minded people who have the means to support our cause so that we can build the archive of Chicago in America first for credibility before we expand anywhere else. A lot of my Predictions are starting to come to pass, like the migrant crisis. Those people are on cold with one another. They don't care about our history and what our ancestors went through. They are here to get the bag. We have moved from the era of warnings to now the era of consequences. At this point in the game, Black America has only two choices, either embrace annihilation or embrace survival. I will only work with those who want to survive. This Willie Lynch mentality will be the downfall of Black America because so many of our people are off cold within Black society. A majority of 
our people have been Americanized and have having a narcissist behavior. A lot of black people that I ran across in real life and online tell me they're not interested in our cause or a solution for black America. They have fallen into the trap of the white supremacist financial elites. For example, we have 500 migrants in Chicago that are placed in the black community. Notice they are not being placed in the white community. They have apartment buildings in the white community. The Democrats are trying to force black people out of these urban areas by using these migrants. Black Chicagoans should be demanding to see the books to know where every tax dollar is going. These are the same Democrats who want you to come out and vote for them in November. Black Chicago and Black America should be supporting Governor Greg Abbott because he is trying to stop the flow of illegal immigration coming to, to our state. The Biden administration went to the Supreme Court to cut the razor wire. Over 300,000 illegal migrants crossed the border. This is an evasion, y'all. There's a video out in California showing people pulling up in boats and helping illegal immigrants cross the border. We have a president in office who is fine with this open border policy. This is literally an invasion, and this invasion happened because of President Joe Biden. He has the ability to stop it. 2.5 million people came across the border last year, and they placed these people in the black community. Yet they expect black Americans to come out and vote for them. Notice they don't place African immigrants, Afro-Caribbeans, or Afro Latinos in the black community. In a few years, Chicago will begin to look like Los Angeles, California. Only 6% of the population is black, and their vote is neutralized, meaning it's worthless. Black people in Chicago better hold the line and speak up about other people being put in our neighborhood. These white supremacist financial elites own properties throughout the black community. You don't have a community if you don't own it. Let me repeat that again. You don't have a community if you don't own it. This is why they can gentrify the black community left and right. 88% of black Chicagoans voted for Brandon Johnson, the ones who are suffering the most. He is not trying to stop migrant crisis. He wants more money to help the migrants. Many people in Chicago no longer want to be a sanctuary city, but the people in City Hall vetoed that decision. We have to give these Democrats a referendum in November. If you don't want to vote for Donald Trump, that's fine with me. Just sit it out. Just don't reward the Democrats. They are allowing people who have anti-black sentiment towards black Americans to come here and to be placed in our neighborhoods. I don't see how any black person could go out and vote for Democrats at this stage of the game. The American dream is in many ways the world's nightmare. The way that we're living is causing such destruction and it's dominated by corporations telling us that we need to buy in order to be happy, healthy members of society. Our federal tax dollars contribute to funding police brutality, mass, inc mass incarceration, and military industrial complex. For 32 years, I've been trying to warn black America about dealing head on with this Willie Lynch mentality with our, within our society. And if we don't, we're going to harm, it's going to harm us politically and socially. Our black politicians are selling us out because they are in the pockets of the white supremacist financial elites. For example, cities for 
action has been used to undermine black Americans through these sanctuary cities and, and mayors. It's sad that black people truly believe that these Democrats have our backs. When you look at all of these police brutality cases have been in Democrat cities, Democrat mayors and Democrat governors. This year, I want GRCAM members and everyone on my Facebook friends list to help me get my, my film project fully funded and made, as well as help get my revised book on that bestsellers list so that everybody would take our call serious. I'm prepared, I'm ready, I'm battle tested, and I need your help to take GRCAM to the next level. The big screen and then to the African-American community starting in Chicago. The Supreme Court has sided with the Biden administration to allow Border Patrol to cut the razor wire. Texas set up to deter migrants from entering the country illegally. Please leave a public comment on my YouTube page about the topic. Most of all, share this video podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Second topic, Supreme Court sides with Biden's open border policy. I found an article from the Associated Press entitled, quote, Supreme Court allowed federal agents to cut razor wire Texas installed on U.S.-Mexico border, unquote. According to the article, it says a, a divided Supreme Court allowed Border Patrol agents to resume cutting razor wire that Texas installed along a stretch of the U.S.-Mexico border. That is at the center of an escalating standoff between the Biden administration and the state over immigration enforcement. Over the past two years, it is estimated that at least a half million people have crossed the border. This was not happening under Trump administration. This all started when the Biden administration came into power. As president, you're supposed to be in the homeland, and he's not doing it. American workers have been demanding a livable wage, and these major corporations don't want to pay a livable wage. They prefer people who will work these jobs. Texas has installed razor wire to deter migrants from entering the U.S. illegally. I just want to emphasize that point. The Justice Department has argued that the barriers impede the U.S. government's ability to patrol the border, including coming to the aid of illegal immigrants. The border, it said, is a victory for the Biden administration while the lawsuits continue over the wire. We are in an election year. This is a victory for the Biden administration, not fixing the American economy, not fixing inflation, not controlling the cost of rent prices, or stopping these hedge funds and major corporations from buying up all the single-family homes. No victory on homelessness in America, but this victory is the Supreme Court saying you can cut the razor wire so you can continue your agenda of open borders. That's a win for the Biden administration. I want people who are going to vote this year to pay attention to where the Democrats' priorities are. The article said Texas Governor Greg Abbott has taken on the border in the name of curbing illegal crossing from Mexico. Federal Appeals Court last month had forced federal agents to stop cutting the razor wire. The Texas military department seized control and began denying access to border patrol agents over Eagle Park has become one of the most the busiest spots on the southern U.S. border for migrant illegal crossing from Mexico. My question to those of you who are still interested in voting, 
how does voting for the Democrats benefit you and your family? How does that benefit the African American community? I would like to know. All these foreigners are coming over here to compete for jobs and resources against you and your children. They don't care about our history. We don't have the money to take care of everybody from south of the border. These black mayors in Chicago and in New York still refuse to remove sanctuary city status, which is attracting these migrants to America. These career politicians don't care about migrants. They only care about staying in power at the expense of the American people. I am not discussing these issues to get clicks and views. Black America failed to heed my warnings during the 2020 election. I encourage all of my listeners who reside in America and all of my group members to demand tangibles for our vote instead of voting for nothing. 90% of black vote has been going to the Democrats for 60 years. Black Americans have been giving away our vote. Today is a new day. Over here, we will teach our members and students the importance of politics and how we can benefit from it through the black grassroots. Notice that the Democrats are making sure to give migrants food, shelter, and medical care when you have Americans that are homeless right now. Please leave a public comment on my YouTube page about the topic. Most of all, share this video podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Our third topic, NYPD officers attacked by migrants. In New York City, there was several migrants caught on video jumping on NYPD officers over the weekend and the suspects were released without bail. You can't make this up. To watch the full video and read the article behind it, just go to my Medium page and look for the exact title of this presentation. Then click on the and scroll down to show and prove. Surveillance footage released by the NYPD shows that law enforcement were asked asking the migrants to move along. A scuffle ensured as the officers were seen trying to subdue someone on the ground. Several migrants were kicking the officers before they ran off. They're causing problems because they don't really belong here. They came illegally. They were all charged with assault and released without bail. In contrast, Eric Gardner was placed in a chokehold because he was selling loose cigarettes, a broken window crime. He lost his life in the in the hands of a rogue cop. He didn't put hands on NYPD cops. These migrants came over here after everything is built. Black people have been gunned down for running away from the cops. People like Walter Scott and Jalen Walker, just to name a few. I've covered these stories for years on how black Americans are treated by law enforcement in this country. These black politicians think black Americans will continue to give our vote to the Democrats. Those migrants who assaulted law enforcement need to be deported out of here. Pushing for open border policies will result in more incidents like this. My question to those Democrats that may be listening to this video podcast is why don't you go look at what's happening at the border? When the Trump administration was in office, we did not experience all of these issues. Migrants are allowed to break laws and commit crimes even against the police. Nearly 100 migrants have been suspected of lawlessness. Since America is not fighting these migrants, it's allowing the criminal element to enter the country. Biden has a hand-off approach when it comes to migrants. They came over here and do whatever they want. They have taken our resources. We all have enough issues of our own taking resources from the black 
black Americans, that's what got me talking about the migrant crisis. Under the Jim Crow, our ancestors sisters created their own schools, hospitals, banks, and grocery stores. The black community has, has always been pro-business. They hired people within the community. The Biden administration is taking or has money for Ukrainians. They have money for migrants. They have money for the Middle East, but no reparations for the people who built this country, black Americans. Please leave a public comment on my YouTube page about the topic. Most of all, share this video podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. Thank you all for listening, and we will see you on the next video podcast. Please join Gracam by joining either my Christian groups, Light of the World Inspirational Group, or Christian Spoken Word Network, or join my secular groups, Gracai of Africa, Gracai of Chicago, or New Black Voices of Media, etc. Also exchange emails with me so that we can stay connected because this is my third Facebook page and hackers are forever bugging. Please leave a public comment on my YouTube page about the topic. Most of all, share this video podcast with your friends. This will help get the ball rolling. I would, I would like to thank everyone who have contributed or will contribute to support us. On our PayPal page, purchasing items from our virtual store or purchasing my revised book. The ebook is $9.99 and the paperback is $13.99. Sixty-five cents. We appreciate your support. You can find all of the links below this video podcast in the comment section. If you're listening to this audio podcast on Spotify, just click on the YouTube icon and look to the far right next to my photo and you will see more links. Click on it and you will see the about section. Then scroll down to the link. This will conclude our video podcast for today. Peace and blessings.